This was really nice music. Hi and good afternoon from Frankfurt in Germany. My name is Johan and I'm very excited and honored to be your host today. So welcome to the API Innovation Summit powered by the Commerzbank and its API cluster. I heard we have attendees from all over the world today and I'm very happy to name just Russia, China, South Africa, we have the USA, of course, and nations all over Europe as well. And uh, in times of Corona, of course, virtual hugs uh, goes out to all of you. So feel hugged today, uh, spread some love. This global perspective um, on this event is pretty much the whole central idea of today's topics. Sustainability and circular economy do not end on a nation's border, that's clear. So it's a global challenge and it's an impact <clears throat> that can only spark a fire when everyone seriously joins in. Corporations are capable of doing big things and that's our goal for today, to kick that off. So how can sustainability support, um, how can technology support sustainability goals? This summit can be seen uh, as kind of a kickoff for further activities, maybe for brand new networks or just to share some inspirations, ideas, or thoughts. So whenever you feel like it, just feel free to do so. Because we as the Commerzbank, we feel that beside the magic of something big, um, there is a huge chance in our network and we just want to use that today. Any chance to accelerate sustainability from a small, medium or even global perspective should be taken. And timing couldn't be better as we heard that there are some very important guys right now in Glasgow dealing about problems for the future and dealing with problems of our mother nature and let's cross fingers they're gonna end up good. Of course today's event has an agenda as well. This especially helps me in order to just pretend to know what I'm doing but it helps you as well to keep me in line and to have an overview about today's event. We kick off with Manfred Knof, our CEO and we are happy Really happy to have him here today. Then we go over to the white paper findings with Katharina. Step three is a hopefully interactive panel discussion. Um, as guests today, we have beside members of an NGO, we have fintechs and um, customers as well. And customers, you know, that are for the Commerzbank the main or the very important thing. The closing lays in the hand of our keynote speaker, Tim Jansen, and I can promise it's a little highlight, so stay tuned for this little highlight in the end um, and keep in line. The panel discussion raises and falls with your questions, of course. It should be very interactive. And to do so, we're asking you to show some activities in the Q&A sector here. So slide into our, into our DMs and use it and ask any question you want, you you want to have answered. We would be very happy about that. And now let's listen what our CEO Manfred Knof has to say for today's topics. Hi Manfred. Hi Johan. Happy that you are here. How are you today? Yeah, great. Um, looking forward to this conference. I welcome everybody on our conference here, wherever you are on your screens and hopefully next year in person. Hopefully. So let's talk about the API Innovation Summit. When it comes to um, innovation and digital innovation, uh, the way to sustain sustainability goals is pretty near. So what's your opinion on that? I mean, sustainability is a super important topic, not only for Commerzbank, I think for everybody in our society. Germany, Europe and society basically is in the front of a big transformation and modernization process. For Commerzbank, it means that we are at the side of our customers and we're helping them in their own transformation process to becoming more sustainable. And it's a part of uh, the way into a green economy. And that's what we are committed and that's what we're working. And therefore, I'm very happy and I'm uh, very interested in what will be the outcome of this conference and what ideas will come out. So you talked about our customers. What do you think, what can they expect from the Commerzbank in the future when it comes to questions about sustainability? I mean, Commerzbank is for more than 150 years at the side of our customers and they really rely that we help them in their transformation process. I mean, their supply chain is a difficult question for them. What is the taxonomy now in sustainability? And we have trained all our 
uh, salespeople and uh, in commerce bank to help our customers. So they can really expect that we are at the site, but we will also define new customer journeys and hopefully from this conference there will be a lot of energy and new ideas at what we can do better for our customers with regard to digitization and sustainability. Very warm words. So thank you for being here and see you soon. Yeah, thank you, Johan, and I wish you a great conference here and I'm looking forward to the results and uh, see you next time. See you next time. As you might have recognized, this technology is brand new and it's called pre-recording. <laughs> Isn't it interesting and amazing what technology is capable of in 2021? Even haircuts can be changed with this technology. Great, isn't it? So we love our CEO Manfred Knof, but it's time to dive a little bit deeper into details. And I'm very happy to have Katharina Berner here today. She and her team were responsible for the research, for the studies and the project. And we are very, very happy to share some insights and some results. So, hi Katharina. Good Hello, you thank here. you, Johan. And also welcome from my side. My name is Katharina Werner. I'm a product owner in the API Banking Cluster. And me and my team are responsible for the topics API strategy and open banking. And I'm really excited to be here and discuss our really important topics. And also, I'm excited to have really fabulous guests on my side. So, welcome, Dennis. Welcome, Alex. I'm Dennis Vetterling, he is research associate and PhD candidate at, at the Business Engineering Institute St. Gallen, and he's researching on the topics ecosystems and pricing. Really cool that you're here, Dennis. Thank you, it's a pleasure. And the second guest is Alexander Pavelek. He is principal product owner and responsible for the topics digital innovation and strategy in the trade finance cluster of the Commerzbank. Cool that you're here, Alex. Thank you very much. Yeah, and before we are talking about the project we just did together, I would like to talk about our white paper. And that's actually why Dennis is actually here, because we recently published our white paper together with the title, How API-Based Ecosystems Can Serve Circular Economy. So two really relevant topics. On the one hand, ecosystems. We as the API Banking Cluster obviously thinking about how can we integrate our API technolo technology into different business models. We are thinking about business models like embedded finance, banking as a service, but also like platform banking. And one of the most, probably most interesting ideas are that we want to integrate our API services into digital ecosystems and also maybe build our own digital ecosystems. So I think really interesting. And we thought just to have the topic ecosystem could be maybe a little bit boring. So we thought we are thinking about a problem we want to solve. And I think the biggest problem we have at the moment is the climate change. So we thought that would be really good, a good idea to bring two topics together, the topic ecosystems with new business models and also the topic sustainability or more the concept of circular economy. And before we want to talk about the white paper, Dennis, could you give us a short kickoff and a short definition about what circular economy is? Ah, sure. So why are we choosing circular economy and not just the topic of sustainability? So basically, sustainability normally focuses on, well, doing less harm. So um, not buying another new thing and not producing more and more and more. And we say, no, we are focusing on circular economy, which is basically the idea of um, sustaining resources in different cycles, but also not only doing less harm, but creating more positive impact for the so uh, society at all. Yeah, really interesting. Thank you very much. And let's talk a little bit more about the content of the white paper mm -hmm. and about the findings. Um, we are in, in the white paper, we are talking about different circular business models. Can you tell us a little bit more about that topic? I'd love to. So um, basically, if you look at circular economy, we say that circular economy can only be enabled by different business models. And we can divide the different spheres of business models in basically three types. And rated on the grade of circularity, we see circular value recovery models, we see circular use models, and circular design and production models. And what's behind of each of these three ideas is a bunch of other strategies how to enable each of these spheres. Um, and maybe, well, it's a little bit theoretical, right? So let's get some examples on there. So for circular um, value recovery models, you might all know them because it's all we already know on recycling models you might have in your garden and so on. So value recovery models are 
already long time established in the whole society. Then we have circular use models. Circular use models are a little bit more interesting um, regarding the grade of circularity. And what you could imagine there is, for example, a headphone producer who has established a headphone on a modular basis, which enables that each component can be reused after his normal life cycle and can be reassembled and then you can just sustain the headphone at all. Um, and the third level basically is circular design and production models. So the highest grade of circularity is um, within these models. Um, there, um, RWTH Aachen, for example, has established a business model focusing on using CO2 to create socks and t-shirts. And another example, um, well, just last week uh, on running, we all might know that company, um, they um, offered an, an, or they announced that they now have an idea how to use CO2 to produce soles for your running shoes. So highest grade of circularity, which beyond them is that, well, these are already long time established, but the circular design and production models luckily gain more and more attention right now. Yeah, really interesting. I think, um, yeah, circular economy, really, really important mm -hmm. like concept. But what the core question of our white paper probably is, is how can ecosystems or concepts such as, such as ecosystems can mm -hmm. help to transform or support the transformation of circular economy? Yeah. Um, so what we see is that the models that are there for a long time, so the normal recovery mo or recycling models, um, they established a certain form of platforms and networks around them. And we luckily see these models and networks arise for the higher grade circular models too. And we are um, sure that the higher the grade of circularity, the more different actors are needed to enable for a circular economy, right? So you can't do it on your own. You need a network of different actors and companies. And that's basically what's beyond um, the mere um, supply chain. Then you go into the idea of ecosystems, networks, um, and alliances, for example. And now we come probably to the questions. A question what I like, what arises for me and probably also for the audience is how can financial institutes or banks and the Commerzbank can help to support these, the transformation from a linear to a circular economy. Yeah, sure. And actually, it's quite a stretch, isn't it? So you get a bank and you try to how to enable circular economy. But well, to be honest, it isn't a stretch at all. Because in our white paper, we elaborate basically on two ideas, two strings, um, how a bank can serve circular economy. So on the one hand side, you have classic idea kind of. So you as a bank, you can enable the liquidity to flow to the companies who try to change their business model, who try to help to create a circular economy. You could also use your competencies to enable these companies to get the payment flowing to their products. So for example, machinery is not only sold as machinery, but as a product, as a service. And then you have to establish certain payment models beyond. So that's point where Commerzbank could help to enable circular economy. On the other hand side, a new idea could be that you can leverage your, well, the trust that is in you as a bank um, to help to create a circular economy in being the linkage, being the connector between different actors and therefore solve the issue of uh, distrust uh, between actors that might be around there today. Yeah, really interesting. Thank you very much. And I think we wrote about a lot of more approaches and mm -hmm. ideas in our white paper. So please download it and read it. I think that's really interesting. Thank you again for the cooperation. That was really, really great. Yeah, yeah, it was a pleasure. Cooperation. And yeah, now, um, yeah, like I said, we have a lot of approaches and ideas in our white papers. So please download it. You can find it on our developer portal, portal and also in, in the event slides. And now um, we, I want to come from the more theoretical perspective to the more practical perspective. And that's why Alex is today with us, because we have worked on some new ideas about ecosystem circular economy. We worked on a prototype about sustainable supply chain ecosystems. So Alex, could you maybe tell us a little bit more about your work in the trade finance cluster and also about our prototype? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so in the trade finance cluster of Commerce Bank, we are responsible for providing the products that our customers need to buy the stuff they need to produce their products and then also to sell their products on a global basis. 
So um, our products really enable our customers to have um, the risk mitigation that they need, but also the financing that they need to really have um, a global supply chain up and running and to really become global enterprises. And um, Commerzbank is actually um, uh, Germany's leader in trade finance. And uh, that's exactly the spot that we, of course, want to retain going forward. And uh, innovation, in our view, is really a very, very important part of it. And that's why here the ecosystem uh, approach comes in and we think in terms of innovation and trade finance, ecosystems are really a crucial driver. And um, the, the key idea of the ecosystem for us is that we have many partners coming together, exchanging data and offering their products in a way to the customers that actually drives even more value creation in the future. So the idea is combine solutions and services that cannot be combined today to make life more easy, you know, to make it more um, efficient for our customers going forward. And um, when you look at trade finance today, then um, the system works, right? So um, you have a whole lot of players out there, right? If you think of exporters, importers, Commerzbank, but also the foreign bank, but logistics providers, ports, etc. The list goes on, right? You're talking about thousands of stakeholders, basically. And today, that is very much fragmented. So the data is there, but it's not interconnected. And that is what leads to inefficiencies in that market. And I think it's very clear that from you know, overnight, there will not be a solution, right? We cannot get rid of processes that have been there for decades, but we can start with it. And that's you know, the key driver also for us to say, let's take a couple of you know, small first steps very similar to what Dennis just said um, in regards to circular economy, we need to take those first steps, embark on that journey um, to really kind of realize the vision that we have for the future. Yeah, I totally agree here. You know, I come from a, from a cluster where we where doing is really the focus. And I'm really glad that we had the co cooperation because we really meant we want to do first steps and that we want to do first steps and not like spending one year of analyzing. So let us maybe talk about our pr prototype we just built together. Yeah, very happy to do so. So first of all, the cooperation really was, was great. So I mean, uh, this design sprint that we did together where you know, people from your team came together with um, representatives of trade finance, you know, we really worked on it uh, um, for, you know, for a very, very specific time, very concentrated exactly on that. And that's the prototype that you see here now. And we called it the supply, uh, sustainable supply chain platform. And the key idea was that we started from a product that is well known in trade finance, and it's called supply chain finance. So the idea of supply chain finance is that um, the um, buyer and their supplier solve the issue of, let's say, of working capital management. So when you think of payment terms, then the supplier always wants to get paid as quickly as possible, whereas the buyer wants to, uh, of course, hold on to his cash as much as possible. And, uh, you know, COVID-19 uh, has uh, been very, very, you know, strong on that one, of course, right? Because cash was king, cash is king, and cash will stay king. And that's the reason why such a product is important. So we started from that to have a very sure, let's say, foundation to start from, you know, because innovating from a very strong foundation always helps um, in regards to making those first steps. And what we've done is we've said, how can we combine supply chain finance with the huge topic of sustainability. And that's where we then came up with this prototype in regards to supp sustainable supply chain platform. And the idea is we have the advantages of SCF and we add to them all of the topics around sustainability. So for example, um, what we've done here is, um, what, we, well, what we want to do going forward is really link up with external partners. For example, ESG rating providers they can send information to us in regards to the rating of certain suppliers. And then you as a, as a buyer knows, okay, my supply chain is a sustainable one. And when you look at all those regulatory requirements that are coming in, for example, the Supply Chain Act, um, then uh, that's the kind of transparency that you're going to have to have going forward. And what we want to do is we want to combine all of this in one you know, ecosystem to give our customers an efficient approach to solving exactly those challenges of the future. And that's where um, the API topic came in and was very, very important because that really connects all of the partners extremely efficiently. And one of the key points for us is customer centricity. 
we do not want to develop all of this just by ourselves because we say this is a cool solution. We want customers to say it's a cool solution. And that's why we um, linked up um, with customers who actually went through this, uh, what we built here. They, they clicked through it. They tried to understand what it is that we built. And um, uh, from there, you know, we're now going to um, uh, take it forward. Yeah. And the cool idea is we started off with, you know, ESG rating providers. And there's a whole lot of fantasy of well, what other stuff you can do. Think of CO2 um, uh, companies, for example. CO2 companies that calculate what kind of footprint you have. Let's add it here, and you already have an additional service that you can think about. Yeah, I actually totally agree here. And um, I think you mentioned a lot of really interesting trends. For example, customer centricity, ecosystems, supply chain finance. So, but I think we could also think a lot, uh, think a little bit about the future and, and look ahead a little bit. What trends did, do you think could also support concepts such as ecosystems or maybe the, the transformation from linear to circular economy? Mm. Yes, yeah, so I think technology is going to be a really great driver in the next couple of years. Because when you, when you think about it, when you think about all the technologies that we have available today, then that is something that wasn't there, you know, decades ago. Now there's really a whole broad range of technologies we can use. And one of them, of course, is blockchain and distributed ledger technology, for example, for data permissioning systems. Because what we're talking about here in ecosystem um, is, of course, a, a, you know, a very large flow of information and huge data pools that are available and very understandably customers want to make sure that that is properly protected and you know I as a customer want that you know certain parties can see certain information but certainly not everyone can see everything it's totally understandable and this technology can help us um, then also uh, Internet of Things for example all these sensors that are available Let's use that data. Let's make sure that this data finds its way into the ecosystem. And then, you know, maybe there's a couple of smart people coming around and say, hey, you know, let's combine this data set with this data set. And suddenly we have a whole new um, a product, a whole new service that uh, can be offered to customers. And always with a view in mind to make life more efficient and to create more value for the customers. And I think there's great opportunity um, for us in store in the next coming years. And um, I think one other very important point is the topic of collaborative innovation. Because in the past, um, everyone was very focused on, 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 on her own company, right? And say, I want the best product for my company. But going forward, there's a much bigger spirit of actually working together to create something for customers that's even better than what people can create alone for themselves. And there are a lot of wonderful ideas out there, um, and uh, I think we just have to leverage that going forward. And uh, personally, I'm very much looking forward to this, this great future that we have, and we just need to make, make use of it. And that's why it's so cool, you know, that we can be together from Commerce Bank, but also have you here with us. Uh, you know, you're providing a very different perspective to what we've seen so far. It's actually a very good sign of that kind of collaboration. So that's why very much looking forward to that um, going forward. Yeah, unfortunately, the time is already over. Thank you very much for your, for your parts and for your cooperation. I think it was really interesting. And I think we could actually discuss the next hours. But I think, obviously, the discussion won't stop here. I think we will cooperate in the future. Thank you very much. And I also think, actually, banks can play a crucial role in this sustainable transformation. And also, I think innovations and new technologies like API will be really important in this. And yeah, and also I think you said it, cooperation is here really, really crucial. And that's actually one of the main reasons why we do the summit here and why we wrote this white paper. Because we won't and we can't do it alone and we don't want to do it alone. We want to do it with you. We want to cooperate with you. We want to work with you. We want to do pilot projects with you. So please contact us. Contact us on our developer portal you see here or just contact me directly or the other participants. We're really happy about that to work with you guys together. And yeah, I'm also really curious what the participants of the panel discussion will, will, tell, will tell us and also what your questions, questions are. So thank you very much again for your, for, for your being here. And I would give back to Johan now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Katarina, for this insight. Thank, thank you and your team, of course. Uh, I assume that they helped everyone to get a little bit better understanding for today's topic. So thank you very much. This helped a lot. I promised a panel and I will deliver a panel. Um, 
And this is actually another call for your questions, so please feel free to ask them and to put them on the Q&A slide in this platform. I'm very pleased to welcome Christoph Behrensen, our API cluster lead, responsible for APIs and open banking in the Commerzbank. Hi, Johan. Hi, Christoph. Nice to have you here. On his side, we have Benjamin Junghans. Benjamin, hi. Benjamin is the director of Steel Digital, which is the gardening manufacturer's VC. And by the way, it's our customer, so I'm very happy to say that as well. Um, great to have you here today. Thank uh, live you. From live from Estonia, um, and uh, we are very pleased to have you here as well. Hendrik Rosner, straight from Estonia, as I said, and the co-founder of Fairone. Um, as far as I understood, Fairone is an ecosystem, ecosystem that enables circular ecosystems, um, a perfect match for today, right? Hi, Hendrik, good to have you here. Let's start with you, maybe, Hello. straight from the point. What's your key takeaway from the white paper? I have two takeaways from that. First being that uh, the, there is no alternative for circular economy, really, like the linear model what we have uh, generates just too much uh, waste to be sustainable. And the second uh, takeaway that uh, the role of a bank for implementing that kind of change towards circularity makes sense because bank itself being like a large circulation uh, for the, any business. So that's so such a vital part and such a good part to enforce and help to make that kind of change on a different company's level. You said it very dramatically, to be honest, there is no alternative. Um, Benjamin, do you have something to add on this? Yes, yeah, so basically I also got to uh, say that I have two um, takeaways. First of all, it's like no surprise at all, banks need to transform like any other industry to be more open, more connected with partners. And secondly, the companies that um, banks are interacting with, like industrial companies like, like Steel, um, we need a partner that provides finance, payment, and also deep insights into regulatory measures to help us provide customer-centric business models. And um, this is a very crucial point because um, a lot of German companies are struggling with that point and want to like Im improve here. And uh, what else is needed than than a, a great partner on the on the finance side, like a like a bank. So uh, you said it, Benjamin, banks need to transform. Christoph, what is your opinion on that? What is your key takeaway from the white paper? Yeah, I think the important message is um, from the transformation from linear to circular, there are several demands coming up. So first of all, demand for financing, as you just said. And um, in addition, we have demand for implementing regulatory requirements. We have a demand for um, banking APIs, so banking as a service APIs for in the processes, and we have a demand for data exchange. And the good news is that we at a bank could support all of those questions or give an answer to those, right? Um, you said it for, before, Benjamin, we, banks need to transform. Yeah, you're right, I guess. But what do you think, how can your company can uh, contribute during this, uh, this transformation or um, can contribute to a circular economy? Yeah, I think that is crystal clear for a manufacturing company like, like ours. First of all, we have the duty and the responsibility to do really produce durable goods, goods that are, let's say, sustainable, um, that can be serviced and refurbished and not being just thrown away after a short time of usage. So that is really like the, the goal of a premium product company like ours. But we also like exploring rental and sharing business models as, as well as a subscription finance as we do with Fairown to bring circularity to all of our customers. We call that, that approach still all inclusive and we implemented that already successfully in some of our Nordic countries, and we're looking forward to go even further. How does Fairone, Henry, contribute to circular economy? I mean, it's in your claim, it's in your vision, it's everywhere as I see it, but can you make an example? Yes, <laughs> of course I can. Fairone, unlike uh, buy now, pay later solutions, provides subscription financing for 
for uh, the technology we love with a smooth renewal process, which brings the same technology to the first and the secondary market. And then when the quantities are large enough, uh, the brands, uh, sustainable brands like steel and Apple and others can use the same technology to produce new products. So it, old technology would become source of inno innovation instead of a waste. And the good old Commerzbank, I mean, 150 years old. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what we can do is what banks always have been doing. We can answer financing demand with lending. Um, but I mean, coming to Henrik, um, when there is a demand for embedded finance services, that is something we are currently working on in our API banking cluster to offer a solution for banking as a service. And in addition, I mean, we saw that in the video, in the, in the uh, video, in the prototype from Alexander, that we could think of offer a platform for um, data exchange for integration. And I mean, the possibilities there are hardly limited, right? Um, and of course, in addition, we could support our clients with uh, consulting of uh, implementing of regulatory requirements, and that's an area, I think, where we are quite experienced in. Yeah. So I understand that <clears throat> all of this needs an, an urgent transformation when it comes to business models, etc. But what do you think, maybe Hendrik, what do you think, what is the, the biggest challenge during this transformation? So how, where, where do you see the biggest, the biggest challenges and threats, maybe, as well? It's the biggest threat, like for everything, is between human being and uh, the human being within the, any company uh, who has been used to do things in an old way and now he needs to do things slightly differently or totally differently or we change the model he has been doing his daily life or organizing a business before. So even if it's uh, the, the new way might be better for the nature, more profitable for the company or anything, everything like that, but it's still a change. So that's a difficult for the person and everybody afraid of it. So I hope that we can get over it. So for you, it's mainly the people. Benjamin, what's the biggest challenge for you in this transformation? Yeah, I also uh, agree with Henrik. Like, um, it's, it's about getting everybody behind, us, behind the purpose of um, you know, creating that um, um, circular business model and making it uh, scalable. Because without scale, you don't um, 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 you know, you're, you're not able to create impact for sure. And uh, in bringing those stakeholders uh, together, it's like having customers that are interested in the, in the kind of products that are served. Um, it's about the sales partners. It's about the management of every party involved. And also includes like making data available all, um, all over the ecosystem to understand what's been going on and to improve the services. So we have been working in the commerce for a long time and working in transformation as well. What do you think on this? Yeah, I um, totally agree with what Benjamin and Henrik just said, um, that it's all about the people. Um, but I would like to add another dimension, and that's the technical part. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the, one of the biggest challenges will be to connect all those partners and to bring them into a stage where they can easily exchange data um, and do that in an area without any standardization is quite difficult. So I think we will have a need for standardization. And as I assume that the data exchange will be done via API technology, I think it would be great to have standardization here like we did in the Berlin Group for the banking business. Uh, and um, as part of the Berlin Group, I can say that it's really, really helpful to come to standardized mm -hmm. APIs. And therefore, I'm really happy that I just recognized on Monday or something like that, that the International Sustainability Standards Board will be located here in Frankfurt. And I guess that's a big chance for Frankfurt as well and the banking industry. We're very curious about that and how, did, how it will develop. Absolutely. Um, by the time we received some questions already, please still feel free to uh, ask your questions and uh, fire, fire them in as much as you can because now we have the time to answer them. I want to start with the first one and it's pretty much, um, it's pretty much in the same direction as the last question was. So the question is, starting and building a digital ecosystem is a big challenge. In technology on one side, but more than um, this in organization and change management, as you said 
I mean, as all of you said, but Hendrik started saying it, um, and community management. It binds much capacities without hope of fast return on investment, right? So how does Commerzbank intend to deal with this? And how does maybe uh, Faron deal with it or even Steel Digital? So are there any answers you can, you can give? Maybe, maybe I can start with that one. Yeah. Because I mean, what you saw on the prototype is that it's about experiments and trying out and asking customers, include customers, include partners, and start to think ahead. And I mean, that is a little bit untypically for a bank, I think, but that's the way we are transforming to, to, to be open for new things, to be open for experimenting, for not having the final solution in place mm -hmm. when launching it, but including customers and partners in, to, in, in, in the very early stages. It's more about the attitude. Yeah. Do you agree? Do you have anything to add? Yeah, I sure. Oh, sure. Of course, I both like of you. <laughs> <laughs> sure, if I can add some things from the in, in industry perspective. So, um, you know, the, the the goal of Steel Digital in you know working together with companies like um, Ferron is to explore new possibilities. And by exploring, we need to have, let's say, um, markets that are interested. So we're looking for markets that want to be leading. Um, in things like the circular economy. So, so, so we partner with that kind of markets um, within the steel group and then simply start proof of concept. So this is a, a normal way in um, technical areas, like you know, if you are in a, in, a, in, a, in a field where you don't know the solution yet, you just uh, try it out and, and go forward from that. And um, with Fair Own, we started this process two years ago and we're now up and running and uh, trying to, to to scale that uh, approach. And it all started with the proof of concept. I, I would like to add here, thank you. <laughs> really good uh, uh, like um, comment here. Uh, but it doesn't always need to be so heavy. So meaning uh, it doesn't need to tie so much resources from the organization like time, funds and etc. So doing something simple easy, not integrating in, into everything or uh, not trying to launch everything together uh, would be our recommendation. So we have been able to bring uh, totally new solutions on top of our integrations live within like five weeks, what is our typical promise. So you have a concept, think about the value proposition, choose products, choose sales channels, you're up off to go and uh, and it doesn't actually there are no such a threshold to to do it as people usually think thank you so far i have another question uh, maybe in the direction of benjamin or benjamin what else do you do in the direction of sustainability and how will steel proceed with that topic yeah so i guess it's about you know all, all industrial companies are, you know, hardware producers. Um, and in producing hardware, you need to find ways to do them more energy efficient. You need to transform from, um, from, from gasoline, from combustion engine to, to, to uh, electrification. So these are a ton of measures that are really like needed to um, be more sustainable in the future. And that's, that's our homework that we need to do. And that's going to happen, uh, let's say, ov over the next decades. And um, adding like this additional services like subscription finance and so on is like another ev evolution step. But the, the basics are on, on the product. And we need to um, work on it very hard. Maybe um, <clears throat> Hendrik, uh, we have another question for you here. Which additional industries are relevant for your business model? In addition to garden robots, <clears throat> I would say consumer electronics is giving us uh, thousands and thousands of uh, transactions every month. But uh, also we are experimenting with fashion as a service using the same, same infrastructure. Uh, we could imagine quite many use cases from tires to service, etc. So there is quite a lot what you can do on top of that kind of subscription financing uh, infrastructure and they apply, apply it for quite many different use cases. So 
we are we are here to just to try different things and see together with our partners what the consumers really like. So since the cost to entry, like in time wise, is rather mm, easy and simple and cheap, so that's why it's good way to try <laughs> new things. Anybody having a good idea, you just reach out to me in LinkedIn, and we'll see. <laughs> Can we make it the service? <laughs> so you're still reading your messages on LinkedIn. That's a good sign. Thank you. Thanks, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Christoph, we have a question for you. How can one initiate a partnership with you? Are there any business areas which are particularly interesting to you? How can, how can we get in touch with you? Yeah, I mean, um, from my perspective, I can say we are quite open for partnering with uh, other companies. Um, we have a partner program ourselves to help especially smaller companies to get in touch with a bank. And um, because with a big bank with a big corporate it could be it could take time and we want to make this as comfortable yeah. as possible mm -hmm. so therefore we have a partner program and this can be found on our developer portal um, and for what businesses I mean that is a good thing we are in close cooperation with all the business developments in the bank and with the strategy department so um, I, I, I think for us it's important that on the one hand it fits to our strategy and on the other hand, of course, is profitable for us as well. So we don't do it all only for mankind. I mean, that is something where I think circular economy has a quite huge potential because circular economy is not only for doing it for better mankind, but for doing it for business reasons as well. Mm -hmm. And that is something um, where I think uh, we as a bank can really make progress together with partners when there is a fit from the strategic view and from the business view, of course, and from the profitability view. Um, I have another question for you, Christoph. Sorry for that, but your turn is soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> how, do you support, uh, how do you support the corporates with uh, regards to exchanging data? Yeah, I mean, we have several concepts here and we are acting on that as well. So um, what we're doing is we try to support requests from them. So um, when they say, well, could you help us with that? We try to uh, support them with tech technology. We're working here on several concepts. And um, I mean, there are some regulations outside that will be effective soon. And I think we as a bank are in a very good position and therefore we're doing it to support our customers here. Um, because as I said, I mean, with implementing regulatory requirements, we are quite experienced. I have another really, uh, another really global question. I would say like it goes into the direction of philosophy, but we will try. Um, it's a nice question, though. Do you really think that people will finally start working together on topics? I mean, as far as I can remember, it would be the first time of human history that not everybody is starting just to kill each other sometime. If yes, what makes you confident about that? And I leave it open who starts answering this question. <laughs> <laughs> I re can I start? I yeah, really like this question. Yeah. This, this, this is, uh, I, I would second to the previous answer from uh, Commerzbank uh, side. So if it's not only ma uh, like, uh, it, if it's driven from profitability, meaning that somebody's self-interest is involved, uh, that is really thing what helps to unite people. So everybody would like to benefit at, but while doing good. So feeling good and earning profit is something which could unite all of us to do something good. So I believe that that is possible. And, and that's why I, I really like the circular economy um, as uh, the reason why Commerce Bank chose this topic to speak about, because it's not the only... Uh, something which is uh, is also opportunity from business wise, and if the opportunity is there, that's a really good reason for people to cooperate because they all will benefit from it financially, and that unites quite well. As we have seen, capitalism kind of tends to be working. Benjamin, what is your opinion that no one will use steel machines for bad reasons? <laughs> Yeah, I think the the my answer to this question is, or or, or this statement is like, um, um, you know, if it does make sense for the players to 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 cooperate, people will cooperate, and that's all uh, part of let's say the uh, uh, market-based economies uh, anyway. And um, you know, having technology 
lowering down this um, 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 thresholds of working together is 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 is, is just amazing yeah, to to see how that really can can work like um, bringing together offline and online um, making everything seamlessly um, um, connecting each other and I think that is like like the the whole thing of um, um, technology like putting down the boundaries to interact and then it's like easy for those people who are who see some sense in in in, in working together to work together simply. They are not giving hope to you. I I think there are some factors which are really important to make such an ecosystem um, really successful. And I think when we're talking about talking on eye level from a bank side, for example, or talking on eye level between partners, we're talking about fairness within an e ecosystem. And I think that's quite crucial to make an ecosystem successful. Um, I mean, there are some ecosystems out there where I think, wow, talking here about fairness and eye level within the ecosystem is not really, uh, yeah, it's not really there. So um, I think, but I, th I think that's really crucial for a successful ecosystem in, for example, sustainability cases or circular economy cases. And um, so I'm looking forward, of course, um, to the future because I think there are, the possibilities are huge. We have a lot of possibilities there, um, but it's on ourselves. We have to go into that topic with a good mindset, um, with fairness, with partnerships, with a collaboration mindset. And um, then, of course, I think we can come to a win-win-win-win situation, and one of the winners will be the world. I mean. That's what we're talking about, right? I totally agree, and I cross fingers for this opinion, so thanks for that so far. Um, Hendrik, I have another question for you. Faroon is not in Germany right now. Are there plans to come onto the German market? We are working really hard to be there as soon as we can. So uh, we just opened up, uh, or opening up in upcoming weeks, Poland. So very, very soon, Germany, we will be there. <laughs> okay, we that's have a promise. We will, of, we will double partners check that. Yeah. Waiting us, <laughs> so we have to come. We will double check that in a couple of weeks, Hendrik, and make sure <laughs> you're holding your word. Um, so, thank you so far. We have, uh, as far as I can see, no more question. Um, oh, wait, we have another question here. Maybe we just um, we just take that in. How do you see the role of technology in connection with, with a circular economy? It's a very abstract question, but maybe someone has something to, to say to it. How do you see the role of technology in connection with circular economy? Maybe, maybe I can start because, as I said, there will be a huge demand for exchange of data. And without technology, that just won't happen. And there are... In a, when you look for supply chains and when you look for transparency in supply chain, we're talking about exchanging data across a lot of countries. And without technology, I have no clue how that could be, be done. So, What is your opinion on that, guys? I would add here that uh, probably technology would uh, be the enabler of uh, transparent the circular economy, so the players who want to play this game according to the rules, what are transparent and uh, visible for everybody, understandable for everybody, and easy to cooperate. So that that would be the technology's role, and I believe that without this technology, like it wouldn't work, at least not in a large scale. All right. Benjamin, yeah, something totally, to yeah. yeah, and I'm and I'm totally interested to 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 make um, make use of this technology. So that is what we are waiting for as a um, as a manufacturer. Working on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, another question um, in the funnel: which by which tangible actions can companies convince consumers to accept circular economy? Good question. Good question, no answers. That's, can I, that's a sign for a really good question. Yeah, Henry, go on. I can go. Uh, so I 
believe again that this is a commercial initiative which helps consumer to make a good decision and the commercial initiative in that sense that they don't for example in our case they shouldn't feel first that uh, they need to pay the full value of for example robot if they don't use the full value of the robot uh, they also feel this more as a service and less as a financing even though that financing is related to this so i believe that if like the brand who is providing the um, trust there so for example steel or apple or any anybody who is uh, telling to their consumers that hey there is a new type of deal what we could do like please use our product for some time and then we will renew it for you and give you the new one and make some good use of the old one uh, it should also come with the commercial initiative so the consumer would feel that it's actually beneficial for him and and it would feel fair so that's the name of Fairo. So any offer we are setting up together with the partnership, we are aiming towards something which feels fair also from consumer eyes. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so commercial initiative in that respect of savings. Obviously, people are more interested to um, to fire questions when it comes to an end. So I have a couple of more questions right now. Yes, but, but, but I oh, think sorry. To, to answer to, to, to the last one, yeah. I, mean, I mean, when we talk about how get the consumers to buy those products, yeah. I mean, I think there are a lot of consumers outside which who are waiting for those products. So they really want to buy those products because they know that the materials are often better, um, that are, they are not that much poisoning theirself. Um, but beside that, there are some possibilities to make regulatory requirements to force the people to do that. I mean, that will accelerate, I think, the process as well. And I mean, what we see is that when once a supply chain is transformed to circular, it's not more expensive. And therefore, I think um, when we get more and more um, the corporates to pay for bad behavior, for example, they get cheaper. And we have as well the aspect that when you change the material to be really circular um, economy ready, um, that you, for example, when we have tool to, to buy tools for a dog, they are not existing of plastic, but of wool from sheep or, or something mm -hmm. like that, that's more healthy for, for the dog. So I, I think there are a lot of reasons mm -hmm. why consumers mm -hmm. would buy circular economy products. Mm -hmm. Um, do, do you think that uh, we, we make around like a uh, quick question, quick answers, so maybe we can do it like this. Do you think that banks will in the future um, be the creator of ecosystems or rather participants? Maybe someone who is not working in the bank can answer first. Benjamin, what about your opinion? Yeah, it's hard for me to, let's say, distinguish. Um, for me, like, you can always create something which is not there and there's always the possibility to create something which we don't uh, see at the moment but it's definitely a, a, a ecosystem is a system of partners uh, some are maybe stronger participants of the ecosystem some some are weaker so i um wouldn't um like to make a guess who's um who who's in charge in which direction and it always are you know like universal banks like like uh, the, the commerce bank they always find uh, you know some spots where they are perfect and whether they are better than others and um, so so uh, I wouldn't bet on one one or the other side. Christoph, driver's seat or? I think both um, because I mean what we're working on is uh, APIs that are able to be embedded finance services and that means that we can easily be integrated into all ecosystems and the, on, the other, on the other hand we saw in the prototype that we aim for building up our own OI ecosystem together with partners. So I think we will have in future both roles. Okay. Um, maybe one last question. Um, Benjamin, as a, as a VC, basically you're doing impact investing. Uh, so on which measures are you deciding and in which companies are you investing? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, I wouldn't call ourselves like impact investing. So what we invest is like um, startups in the early stage that are um, in the business areas of uh, 
forest, of gardening, of um, agriculture. So all, all of the verticals that Steel are is, is working in. And for sure, if you're a company like Steel that has strong roots in the forest, it's it makes totally sense to protect the forest. Uh, and this is why we, we, for instance, also invested in a company that is um, detecting um, fire earlier than satellites do or than, than, than any other things do. And um, this is, let's say, our answer that we want to, let's say, be, be helpful in protecting the nature. And um, this is uh, also where, where, where our tools come into place, like, like uh, working together as humans in the nature and being helped by our tools. Uh, we have another question. What would you want to see by um, governments, bodies such as EU, USA, China, Russia, to facilitate the exchange of, a, of data on a global basis? Interesting. I see question marks above your heads. That's, that's yeah, I, mean, I mean, what we need, first of all, is a commitment that they want to take part of this transformation, yeah. right? I, I mean, that is what we all are waiting for. And um, what is required to, to have this transformation worldwide and um, to, to have a positive impact for the climate. I mean, the climate change will affect everybody in the world. So um, I think that would be the first step. And then, of course, as I said, I, I think we need just some standardization for data exchange and for connecting the players. Anything to add, guys? Not now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would maybe just a few words add that uh, probably it's, uh, it's about also like definitions. So meaning that they would all help to define what kind of data we need, how, how they are standardized, and they are kind of taking the ownership of the same problem. Because uh, if the, on the government level, or even if some government level has, and for example, China doesn't have it, so they, they should like align because this kind of question like circular economy should be quite easy to align, even if the commercial interest might not be there initially. But the principles we should try to align at least on the government level and then take the data and then connections and definitions. Henrik, I have another question for you in line. Um, can you or could you go into further details on how your business works exactly? It requires many people to be ready to accept used goods instead of new ones, correct? Yes, it, uh, it does. Uh, so it does initially customers being ready to think about more as a usership and not uh, think about, for example, consumer technology as something that they want to inherit to their children and keep in drawers. So they should think about using a phone, laptop or something like that a couple of years and handing it then to the secondary market. And we are the ones uh, having a smooth renewal process to make this change happen, the change which uh, helps customers to to get the new product and hand us the used one. And we are uh, filling the gap between zero and the one. So meaning we are handling smaller quantities of used products in the beginning. When we talk about smaller, we talk about thousands and, and maybe tens of thousands. But if it becomes to like uh, more, uh, then that's why we are working with original equipment manufacturers and the brands directly so they could actually set up those assembly lines to take the products uh, which they have produced a couple of years back and use the components to make uh, new and even better products out of them. So we are not aiming to handle everything uh, uh, alone. We are like a glue to put it all together because currently all these old technologies usually staying on customers' hands and, and handled in a very unpredictable manner for the brands. So it's nobody knows when you want to go to the 
corner or, or off the street and sell you a used laptop with cash to some strange stranger. Yeah. So we are taking this part of of, the, of your of consumer's life away. So that's kind of what we are solving. And I think it depends on what the consumers learned so far, right? Because when I look, for example, to the area of smartphones, um, as I was young, it was pretty clear that a smartphone has to be new. But last year, I bought a used one. And I, 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 I think that's like the behavior with car sharing. As my parents were young, it was clear that you have to have a new car when it has to be uh, when it should be good and, and and nowadays it's quite normal to do car sharing so i think it's like learned behavior for the society that we can change what is your perspective on or perspective on that benjamin would are, are people ready to buy used steel machines or do you do you see a change in the behavior there yeah, i guess with with steel machines we, we are in a good position there because uh, people already like you know are, are, are very careful with the products and um, are also refurbishing the products. Like, like we have a, a dealer network of more than 50,000 servicing dealers worldwide who are also taking back used machines, refurbish them and um, sell them. But it's not done in an organized way, it's more decentralized. And um, you can do that with all the products you can, you can service and you can um, maintain. And this is uh, from ever since um, our, our goal as a company to make such sustainable products that can be repaired and also um, sold to, to another person. Yeah. One last question maybe, and then we're coming to an end. Uh, to Christoph, actually, do you believe banks are going to act as trusted partner to not only store my money, but also my data? Yes, of course. I mean, that is what banks stood for during the last 150 years. For example, Commerzbank, they stand for trust and for security. Banks know how to secure data, how to secure data accesses, how to make it data protected, how to make it compliant. And uh, therefore, I think most definitely, yes. Something to add, guys. Otherwise, it's your last chance to say something. All right. So, thanks to all of you. Um, these are really interesting insights and I wouldn't dare to interrupt you, but it's my job today. I was hired for that. So, thank you very much for um, answering, your, answering the, these questions, for your opinions as well, sharing your opinions and your thoughts here in this, in this special round. Thank you as well. Thanks for the plan. And uh, yeah, see you soon. Thank you. As, as I promised, as I promised, I have another highlight for you, um, although we are heading towards the end. Um, our keynote speaker, Tim Jansen, is upcoming and he is one of the leading promoter of circular economy in Germany. So be aware of what's coming now. After a brief introduction, he will talk about rethinking sustainability, positive footprints and his NGO, Cradle to Cradle. So stay tuned and join us. Tim Jansen is co-founder and managing director of Cradle to Cradle NGO. The Berlin-based nonprofit organization is an accelerator for Cradle to Cradle, a holistic approach and instrument for establishing a circular economy starting with the circular design of products and processes. As Tim says, we need to rethink the way we produce and consume, and we need to transform our linear economy into a circular economy to be able to create a positive ecological, economic and social impact. His degree in business with concentrations in entrepreneurship, innovation and leadership and his current career trajectory make him a sought-after expert and speaker for Cradle to Cradle, Circular Economy and Social Entrepreneurship with appearances at corporate events, political roundtables as well as public events and conferences on an international level. Hello everyone and thanks uh, for the invitation. So I have the honor to take the next 20 minutes to uh, give you some more context to um, those uh, 
uh, talking for myself, I feel very much important uh, topics and questions. So I'm uh, Tim and I'm, I'm happy to tell you some uh, bits more about the um, connection in between a circular economy and what the role is of uh, the concept, the design concept, the principles of Cradle to Cradle, as I'm um, director of Cradle to Cradle NGO from Berlin and I'm happy to be here in Frankfurt because uh, most parts of our um, society, of our economic system work from cradle to grave and not from cradle to cradle. So that's why. Um, and that's because we are taking materials um, out of um, our planet Earth and we are producing uh, goods and services and uh, our business models run uh, on that linear uh, principle that we are not taking care of those uh, very precious actually and valuable materials and bringing them back into cycles. So most um, of our uh, systems uh, run like that, linear, and it's a matter of uh, product design. So Cradle to Cradle is, is a design approach um, a, and a very holistic one because, uh, for example, plastics, um, they, uh, in the very end, in some cases even uh, land in the um, oceans and they are not biodegradable, but actually those valuable materials, precious ones, uh, might be recyclable if we design them in a way and this really um, uh, needs uh, good engineering in the very beginning and uh, uh, nice business models actually, that we then later on can uh, recover uh, those materials such as um, plastics, um, also is depending uh, on the design for, for metals from, from small parts even uh, to big structures like um, buildings. But not, not only um, this, it, it's also about the systems we uh, run like the agricultural systems. It needs 25 centimeter of fertile uh, soil with uh, humus to, to um, to, to grow our food on and we, we lose up to 6,000 times um, more each year than we can build up actually. So it's not about only about our products, it's, it's about the way we produce uh, nutrition, it's, it's the way we define quality. So from, from my point, point of view, it's really much about the quality itself. Actually the material of a car tire has never been made to be used as a bag later on and the PVC plastic which is very very stable is pretty much hard to recycle uh, later on especially when it comes to the ingredients which is very much about important for the circular economy of the future powered by cradle to cradle is that we define what substances are uh, getting and get led into um, the products that we can later on decide to recycle because we need to know what's inside and uh, there's, there's one drastic example actually I have two ones, one is especially for, for banking important, one is for, for the car industry and manufacturing here. Um, for, for a long time we used asbestos in braking pads which is actually very much carcerogenic so we said we, we need to uh, get rid of uh, the substance but we were not defining what else gets as a substitute into the product of a, of a, of a um, braking pad. It was antimon sulfides which are much more cancerogenic which really shows we need to positively define those materials for a circular economy in terms not only to be recyclable but also in terms of being um, healthy. And another example is actually that the, the, the coin of uh, the European currency, the euro, uh, has up to 320 times more uh, nickel in it than the EU directive for products actually allows. So 10% of our western population is sensitive to nickel and uh, it has to do with our poor design of products which in many cases they are not made to be recycled and in actually in many cases as well they are not made to be used by us with direct contact uh, to it. So with sustainability debate over the last decades, I want to give you some more context on that discussion now. Um, you could feel that this planet Earth would be better off without us. Uh, in, in terms of the automotive industry, I just have three examples for, for you with 
Volkswagen Way to Zero and AIM Zero um, uh, emissions, uh, cutting emissions generally and stating out probably uh, it would be better uh, uh, not to live our lives on planet Earth. So it would be more sustainable even to cancel um, this uh, digital summit here because as I'm talking, I'm, I'm emitting uh, CO2 actually. We need electricity for that, for that. and someone, some renegade actually have, has built up this, this building I'm speaking from uh, here in, in Frankfurt. So uh, the, the classic, the conventional point of view in sustainability shows us that we can define positive goals for economy and for social aspects, whereas we reduce our footprint to, to, the, to the minimum when it comes to uh, ecology. And with Cradle to Cradle, we state that we don't need that on the left side triple bottom line, we need that triple top line where we maximize our goals in a positive manner and say we need products, we need services, we need business models where I as a company can contribute for the better and not only leaving a, a very small footprint but where I leave a positive footprint and then if I define how, how this works with recyclable materials, with healthy materials, I later on can then maximize my very positive contributional footprint and that, that's the difference in between how our world works right now, our systems work from cradle to cradle where we uh, as human beings are past and not contributors but with cradle to cradle uh, we can close um, the cycle within a uh, circular um, uh, economic um, systems and are we too many for that because actually this is one of the very established questions, um, me especially as a um, as working uh, in, the, in the sector of NGO, we, we talk a lot about uh, the, this transformation with businesses and politics. Are we too many? Because we, we are going to be 10 billion, probably 11 billion, uh, 11 billion people on planet Earth. We are not too many, actually, because uh, as you might see in, in calculations and numbers, there's four times the biomass of us humans is, uh, is um, our, our ants, the population of ants, and they are not bringing any problems. They are a contributor to an ecological system. And, and so we, we are not contributing right now. So uh, the way we run our economic systems is, is causing harm, is causing pollution and is using up resources. So that's why we need to combine the questions of climate change and resource scarcity to, to leave not only a reduced, possibly efficient footprint, but we need to define by, by, by uh, materials with, which are designed for recyclability, we need to define our footprint not only being efficient, optimize the existing systems, but creating new systems which then uh, work effective. And uh, this is why we question the concept of waste in general. Cradle to Cradle is really questioning the way we produce our products around us because waste in, in, in terms of uh, this philosophy of cradle to cradle, waste equals food. Actually, we could even possibly state out food is food because we need to get rid of that concept of waste because it's man-made because um, biological systems, they, they don't work like that. But we as human beings uh, with uh, developments like plastics and our chemical industry, uh, there's much positive to say about um, those added values we created over the past 100 to 150 years. But it led us to the point that we see we are losing much of those materials. So we need to uh, distinguish in between uh, waste and food and we need more products that really questioning the concept of waste and which stay of food as being nutrition, as being resources of the future. So nature is our role model and we can see that we close two cycles and that's, that's the basic assumption of cradle to cradle is that we design our products either for the biological cycle or the technical cycle. So within these two cycles and it is ve very much important, it's vital to discuss in what manner we use our products, whether we consume products 
or we just use them. This is very much important to understand how the circular, circular economy of the future works. Uh, for example, if I drive with, uh, with my car, my bike, or I'm walking with my shoes, my shoe sole is getting less and less by the contact to the ground as the car tires uh, go into uh, ecological systems as well. So the tire itself, as well as my shoe sole, I'm I'm having uh, on my feet right now. They need to be designed for a scenario where the material is consumed because uh, you can't do anything against it. We lose small fractions of that material as we as well, for example, uh, clean our clothes in a washing machine and small microfibers been washed out even from our plastic textiles. So we need our textiles to be designed for a scenario where those small fibers can be um, biodegradable um, in natural systems because they, uh, they are emitted to our water systems, they are, materials are emitted to biological systems. So that's why we need to discuss the usage uh, scenario. If you have a product which is consumed, it needs to be biodegradable in the very end. In usage cascades before, of course, you could either reuse materials again and again, but if we lose materials, and in many cases we do, they need to be biodegradable to close the natural cycle. Um, to close the technical cycle, we need great business models and closed material loop scenarios uh, for uh, the matter um, of usage where we don't lose any materials, like the frame um, of a bike, or uh, the, the car itself, uh, despite the, um, the tire, we can then dismantle and return all the material and then refurbish it and um, separate all material streams from one and another and then close the cycle by, by reusing the material, but it really depends on the material itself. Is it designed to be recycled? Uh, yes or no. And this really has a lot to do with our design, which needs to be for innovation. That means we need to define what's inside our products, what's inside our services, what's inside our business models. If we define what's inside and we keep the information about it, and this has a lot to do with API, and uh, IT technology, of course, um, we not only produce products for the future that are healthy for us people and the environment, from the very small products to the buildings, which uh, probably uh, have a healthier indoor air quality that, uh, compared to what we find outside. And there's no free off anymore. It's, it's not about to know what's not inside your product. We need to definitely, we need to define what's inside our products to then later on close the loops. And this probably will change in, in some, probably in many cases, the way our uh, business models work. Because uh, not in all cases uh, soon, we will uh, take the ownership for products, but we probably only uh, take the service and uh, leave the ownership to the provider, to the producer, to a service entity. And this has a lot to do if we want to close the technical cycle, has a lot to do with uh, the question, how does a reverse logistical system look like if I design a product in a way that I can perfectly recycle all materials, I need to get it back from my customer. And this is uh, where my product becomes a service. That's why we discuss a lot about product service systems, PSS, that I, for example, get only a soft a floor covering instead of owning a carpet. And what is the connection to APIs and digitalization? If you know what's inside your products, that's why I'm not only talking about metabolisms physically, but also about metabolisms digitally. It's about material passports and systems that carry the information, what do I have, and give a value to it. So we need to take care that we stay with the information from raw materials to, to social and ecological impacts. And this is a matter of digitalization, of course, because it's very much complex. And we talk about a lot of data. And this data in the past, till now, because we don't see 
many of those systems in place, but it's about to start. I just yesterday was on a conference about the built environment and architectural structure because it actually creates, creates up to 60% of all the waste, uh, if it comes to Germany, is produced in the built environment by architecture and construction. So in the past till today, in many cases, we know about the quantities. There is a ton of steel, there is a ton of textiles, in some cases a ton of paper, Paper and you can, uh, you can buy it actually on the market and say I buy one ton of paper. But you can't state out right now in what quality you buy this uh, paper, uh, this textile, pile of textile or this secondary resource material um, from a building which is demolished. You can't say much about the quality, only about the quantity. So we need to bring those two informations together. There's a ton of textiles in the quality of cradle to cradle because we know what are the colors, uh, what are the, um, the added uh, chemicals and finishes, uh, the yarn and everything else um, and we put it in a digital system which uh, then carries not only quantity and quality but can then generate an actual market price, an actual market value, because I, th I believe that we need to take the market serious from now on and into the future because uh, in some cases ecological products, they cost less on the market because we, uh, we, we uh, have been uh, privatized profits, uh, but we, um, um, have, uh, we need to pay uh, uh, for, for the costs uh, as a society. So this is a matter of internalization of external costs right now. So we don't have actually a free market when it comes to a holistic sustainable approach. Of course, a product which is not generating waste is much more sustainable. So we need that market and there are solutions on the market already and we need more of them in the future. The digital uh, digitization is important for the circularity and those business models, uh, they need to do um, the same. You can see uh, building information modeling in construction, uh, the material cadastre uh, which, which brings up ideas of how to maintain the information and not losing them uh, up to the uh, topics of data security. There are some companies and startups starting with uh, those ideas and we need um, more of it definitely and that's why I'm very happy that we uh, discuss it uh, more broad uh, today here at um, Commerzbank and I want to give you some more context in what we mean and what we don't mean actually when it comes to cradle to cradle and circular economy actually cradle to cradle and circular economy is not dealing with waste management anymore the waste management in which Germany actually is uh, pretty much good in that's not the future because it's not taking care of the product design just handling waste we don't need waste anymore in the future and we need a German Kreislaufwirtschaft, actually uh, a, a new form of it because in Germany we talk about this a lot for 20-30 years even though um, we have systems to recover materials but we don't have products which are circular economy and cradle to cradle um, ready. So sustainability in that sense is not concrete, is not enough because sustainability is almost everything which helps us to understand what, what the very global goals are but uh, sustainability in many cases from a strategic point of view led to reducing our footprint whereas I uh, state out that we need to define a positive footprint and then maximize, uh, maximizing um, that footprint and it's really not about zero waste because if you're from one day to another you think a lot about how to reduce uh, for example packaging we are not thinking much about how to design a circular and future ready packaging. Uh, so it's not about the reduction, it's about the definition and the quality. So a circular economy that's the goal, that's the political one, especially within the European Union. We have the Circular Economy Action Plan and so on and so on. And with Cradle to Cradle, this is a framework specifically tackling uh, the question, how can we do it? How can we bring it to action? So with Cradle to Cradle, this is a path, a design concept, very specific. And this is really uh, not the future, this is the present. This happens right now with more than 300 companies globally and more than 8,000 products already on the market from uh, cleaners to paper products, from, a, uh, from chairs uh, up to big structures. You, you see a lot of those uh, product innovation actually 
actually, and there is a certification which deals with those aspects of material health, product circularity, uh, the water quality, our regenerative energy in use, and our social aspects. So it really comes to the question, who's responsible, consumers, businesses, or politics? I would say, all together, we need a demand from consumers, we need supply from businesses, and of course, we need a framework politically. And opportunities for banking, as a basic assumption, I told you, a serious market economy internalized with all aspects is needed for that. And if we get information about quantity and quality of our uh, circular products, which we produce now and will be reused in the future, we will get current market prices out of that information. So I think that's the value of the future because at the moment, we can't give an existing building a, a, a current market price in terms of all the products. You can state out that demolishing a building, for example, gets a lot of costs, but what are actually all resources in the building? Um, what is the price and, and what is the value? We can't um, tell. So we need that circular market. That's why we need, of course, uh, uh, banking and we need banks to help with probably data security and trust has been discussed already and uh, should be furthermore uh, discussed what the role is in terms of API information flow and from small products to buildings uh, we need that future type of, I would uh, call it, material banking because at the moment someone is the owner of a building and in the future, uh, for example, um, a bank is in, uh, in a holder of, uh, for example, the windows of a building and can invest with uh, their money in uh, uh, products and materials which uh, uh, stay with a certain value today and for the future and where you know probably we build a building for 50 to 60 years and then in 60 years as a very long-term investment you get the value of those resources back and those are the questions of us, as, of us at Cradle to Cradle NGO. We do education, networking and transformation on those topics. Why am I saying this? Because we did it ourselves uh, in construction at the C2C lab in uh, Berlin and we showed that if you renting an existing building and refurbish it from old to um, recyclable and new one, we put all the data in digital systems so you can quickly aggregate the value of what we've been done on 400 square meters and invest probably has hasn't been done uh, till today but might be an opportunity in the future invest in those valuable materials because we will definitely um, get them back so this is just a quick glance from my side in a very limited uh, frame of time coming to an end i think it's important to understand that or most, mostly of our uh, business models will definitely um, change in terms of uh, from linear uh, to circular. Uh, we need to do it because there's only one planet, of course, but I think we're definitely not too many people. We are um, in, in charge to change that now and f uh, especially uh, see those opportunities because actually uh, this is going to uh, generate uh, higher value uh, uh, throughout the supply chain and not from cradle to grave, but from cradle to cradle. Thanks for that beautiful finish. I uh, was rarely listening to any like this passionate keynote in the last months and years. So thank you for that. This was very convincing and uh, inspired me a little uh, to think more about, uh, thank about it. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Tim. I guess we could have all listened to, to a couple of more hours to you, but actually time is this Time is a short resource, as our planet is as well. So thanks again for being here. Um, coming to an end, um, I hope you all enjoyed the program and this, uh, this little event here. Um, please visit, visit uh, developer.commerzbank.com for sharing the summits, uh, the, the summit real life, downloading the white paper, or just ask any question or uh, share any thoughts you have in um, terms of our little event here. So that's it, and I can speak for me. This was uh, really fun, um, but the real credits, of course, belong to all the hardworking people that prepared and organized this event here. So um, it is always more work than we can imagine, so congrats to that. I think it was a 
a good success and a very good start. Talking from the start, this event may just have been the kickoff for many more activities. And in the end, it's a try and uh, not a solution. Um, we thought inaction is always better. Uh, we, we thought action is always better than inaction. So we decided to do this event today, and we are confident that technologies and APIs, especially APIs, can contrib contribute to the big challenges ahead. So, my dear guests, stay healthy, stay curious, and let's continue turning businesses upside down uh, when it comes to the aspiration um, of sustainability. See you soon. Take care, and thanks for having you here.